And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as thy as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It's enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Amen. I want to talk to you for a few minutes on the, uh, the kill me now prayer. Probably none of y'all ever prayed it, but the preacher here prayed that you can just kill me now. Jesus, I love you. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for everything you've been. You have been a mighty God. In my time of trouble, you were a place of peace. In my time of distress, you were a rescue from the storm. Lord, I love you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. And today, we give praise, Father, for the work that's already taken place across this congregation. For those, Father, that have been blessed by you, Father, that which we can see and those things, the blessings we are unable to see. We give you praise, whether, Father, the sun is shining on our lives or we're in a season of rain and it's winter, but knowing that all things work together for your good. I pray you would anoint me God that you father would anoint me father today to preach your word in the wonderful name of Jesus uh, why don't we give the Lord a great praise what an honor to have brother and sister Smith with us missionaries to Spain all of our guests we're glad you're here you can be seated uh, first Kings and the story of Elijah is is an amazing story no doubt our Sunday school kids are familiar with it uh, the 18th chapter is probably one of the coolest chapters in, in the Bible. It's, uh, it's the place that we talk about when we're telling the story of Elijah, for it is there that every believer dreams to live. It is the chapter that every pastor evangelist desires to accomplish in their lives. It is Elijah single-handedly by himself and God confronting a wicked king Ahab. And then he calls for all the false prophets, all the satanic pastors of the Satan church, 450 of them of Baal up onto a mountain. And he says, whoever's God, let's build a, a sacrifice, an altar, and whoever's God will answer by Fire, And no doubt you know the story how that the Baal pastors and the satanic worship people, they started doing what they do. They cut themselves and they, they're trying to do all this. And Elijah's over there making fun of them. He's just laughing, having a great time. Finally, they get done. No fire falls. He gets down. He doesn't just, he, he doesn't just pray. He gets water and pours water all over it. And then he digs a trench around that uh, altar and that sacrifice, fills it up with water just to prove a point. He's like, watch this. Lord, send the fire, and the fire falls. Come on, that's the kind of thing you want when it's your job, amen? When your, 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 your co-worker's like, no, I'm right. No, you're right. Let the fire fall, and it just consumes your hamburger, you know? You're like, yeah, I told you I was right. That's what we dream of. And then, then it's been a drought, and it's dry, and it hasn't rained. And so he gets down, and he prays. And next thing you know, Rain is coming down from the sky. This is an awesome chapter, amen? This is a revival season, and so rain is falling from the sky. And next thing you know, he, he says, all right, Ahab, he says, let's go. You got, we got to go. It's about to rain. And so Elijah, the Bible says, started running, and he ran on his feet, and he passed by the chariot of Ahab the king. Uh, this, uh, this wouldn't have just been a, a, a cheap little chariot. Uh, the fanciest, highest, fastest, best horses, best chariot, best everything you could buy at the time. And this preacher is on his feet walking by, running past a chariot. I'm going to tell you what, uh, that God's man and prayerful men can do more on foot than the world can do with all the wealth they've got. I said, you're more powerful coming out of a prayer meeting uh, than the most powerful man on earth. Uh, you've got more power. You've got ability to accomplish more. Uh, I, I wish I had somebody that believed that this morning. Uh, that no matter, come on, no matter what you're going through, uh, you're with some people. We might not have the money. Uh, we might have not have the prestige of the world. Uh, but we've been in a prayer meeting. Uh, and we can uh, accomplish. Uh, we can see the supernatural happen. 
I said it happens by faith. Miracles start happening. That's why. And we're not, hey, someone said, how, how long are you going to keep talking about the miracles that happen? We're going to keep talking about them until we make it to heaven. Amen. You need to know. I don't know if Sister Haggard's here or not. If Sister Haggard's here, stand. Amen. Healed of a heart condition she's had for many years. Uh, last Sunday, Sister Joni. Amen. Just come on up here real quick because I can't remember what God healed you of, but it was something great. Hey, when... When so much good is happening, it's good to come sometimes for you. I have to write it down. Right. I was having heart palpitations in my Sunday night. As of then, they're gone. She hasn't had any heart palpitations since. You say, oh, that's not a big deal. Hey, it's a big deal. It's, it didn't happen with a fancy doctor's journal. It didn't happen with some, no, 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 no. Hey, I'm not against doctors, uh, but I believe there is a healer. Uh, I believe there is a way maker. Uh, and today, my friend, uh, you might have walked in with a troubled heart, uh, a messed up cancer, whatever it is, whatever it is. Uh, he's able. You're with people that have been in a prayer meeting uh, who are expecting the fire to fall, the rain to come, and then we want to see the miraculous happen Woo. and so what but what I what I what I notice here is that the preachers running past the king the king looks over can you imagine and there he comes whoo, running by last now if you next time you see a preacher running past a chariot that's in Acts chapter 8 y'all remember that one there's an Ethiopian eunuch and there's another preacher running by him. And that guy said, if that dude can run that fast, he needs to be in my chariot. Ahab, come on, and guess what happened? His life was forever altered. But Ahab was content to sit in his chariot and let the supernatural run by him. Now, now next time Elijah gets in a chariot, they go into the heavenlies. If Ahab, oh, come on, if Ahab would have had a little spirituality in him, he'd have said, wow, I can't sit here on my chariot. I can't sit here in my comfort zone. I need to go ahead and get whatever that man's got inside of my house. I need to get whatever's going on right there inside my chariot. What would have happened if Elijah would have got in the chariot? Maybe they'd have started swirling and went up into the supernatural. Hey, what would happen if you got prayer into your pew? What would happen if you got to come on out of your comfort zone and stop relying on yourself? Come on and said, I'm going to, come on, I'm going to heed the word of the man of God. I'm going to find my place of prayer. You could have a heavenly experience uh, if you would heed the word of the Lord. And, and so here he is headed towards uh, Jezebel in, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1. And we read it. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And all with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. There's no mention of God. Elijah hadn't done it. God did it. But people can't see God, so they get mad at his people. If you're going to be, come on. You, see, you think everybody's going to be excited when you start laying your hands on the sick and the fire starts falling. Not everybody's going to be happy. You're going to have some, hey, you can be healed and have haters. Your life can be going better than it's ever going, and there's people hating on you. You're in church. You're not, they were happier when you were addicted to drugs. When you was messed up, jacked up, your marriage was in a mess. Now it starts getting together, and they're all talking and negative because you were their measuring stick for success. And as long as you were a dope head, they could soothe their conscience. Well, at least I'm not like Mike. At least I'm not like Tommy. But then Tommy got changed, and they got no excuse, so now they got to hate on whatever fixed you. Hey, friend. Get ready. If somebody's hating on you, if somebody's talking about you, that means God must be doing something with you. Man. Ahab, Ahab, he, he went to Jezebel and she told her, that preacher, man. And, and the Bible says Jezebel got mad. See, Ahab was content just to be rich, powerful, he was just, he was a materialistic humanist. Just humanism, he was all about himself, all about power. But, but Jezebel is anti-Christ. She's not just, she doesn't just not believe in God, she hates God. Let me tell you what materialism and humanism is. It's the door for the spirit of Antichrist. Ahab had the spirit, I don't care, whatever, just let him do his thing. But that leads to a spirit of let's kill him. Let's finish it. Let me tell you something. The spirit, 
of this age is the spirit of humanism and it's the spirit of selfishness the love of money is the root of all evil the love of self is the door that opens for the spirit of antichrist when your attitude about the things of god is casual you will one day have an attitude that is against it don't matter it because hey You might just be casual about it and don't really care, but your kids will be against it. It It's not that big of a deal. Oh, we're just missing Sunday morning. Oh, it's just a Bible study. Oh, it's just prayer meeting. It's not that big of a deal. I've got to do this for me. I've got to get this done. I've got to go here. I need this. I need that. I need that. And I now has replaced him. And uh, and, and you say, well, I'm not against God. No, 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 no. But it's the door that leads to the door, to the way of the spirit of Jezebel. When you start loving you more than you love God, the things of God, the man of God, the word of God, let me tell you, it won't be long until you are a foe against God. He's not going to come in to the church of North America in a witch costume, 666 with blood running down his face. That's not how the spirit of Antichrist is going to come to the church or attack you. You would run to this church faster than lightning if a devil showed up on your door tomorrow with with a grim face and red eyes and 666 tattooed on the back of his hand and said, come with me. You would run. Matter of fact, you would sit on the front row. You'd be up here at this altar. Amen. That's why he's not going to come like that. He comes like this. It's not that important. It's really, man, the preacher's just making a big deal. And then you find yourself getting mad at the preacher because he's making a big deal. Ooh, I'm in the Holy Ghost right now because I'm touching the spirit of our generation. The spirit of our generation that says, me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 I, 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 I don't like it. I don't want it. I don't need it. I don't go, me, 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 I, 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 next thing you know, Jezebel says, let's kill them all. Let's just put it to an end. And you know what Ahab's like? You know what? That would make me feel better. I could preach all day. Oh, yeah. That's in God. They, they, this, these people, listen. These people have just witnessed fire falling from the sky. I'll never do it. I'm, I'm Pentecostal. I've seen miracles. You've never seen physical fire burn up an altar covered in water? They had. They've just watched rain. A preacher, pray, physical rain. If I right now begin to pray, rain fell. Woo. Your minds would be blown. Ahab has just watched the preacher outrun a chariot. And they still want to kill him. Exposure to the supernatural is not going to save you unless your heart is right. You've got to be in love with this East Gate. Come on, Christian. Come on, visitor friend. Yes, we're in the miraculous. Yes, we're part of the supernatural. But what we are is in love. We're in love with this truth. We're in love with this holiness message. We're in love with this one God, Jesus name, tongue talk and experience. It's against God. And this is the attitude. Of, this is the attitude. Of Pharaoh. Look at Pharaoh, a spirit of antichrist. Until he says, "Let's just let's just go after him." I'm not. He, he saw all kinds of supernatural things. Pharaoh did, and he still wanted them. Look at those guys stoning Stephen. The Bible says that they plugged their ears. They see his face glowing supernaturally. <laughs> And they plug their ears and gnash him with their teeth and stone him to death. Oh, be careful when you become complacent. Oh, be careful when God's word or God's message doesn't kind of, ugh, that just irritates. And it gets in your crawl and you start getting an attitude about God. And you start getting an attitude about the things of God and the house of God. Hey, friend, you're at the doorstep of the spirit of Jezebel. You're on the doorstep of going the wrong way. Hallelujah. So Jezebel says, Antichrist, anti-God, writes a message to him, I guess. And she says, look, dude, verse 2. She says, I'm going to chop your head off just like you chopped my preacher's heads off. She said, put it up there. So they'll kind of follow me. We're just kind of teaching. I'm just teaching in fast mode. She said, we're going to kill you. 
Just like you killed all my preachers. Now I think this is funny. Why are you going to send a note telling the dude what you're going to do? Why not just send the executioner and kill him? You already know this dude's crazy supernatural stuff. If you can get to him with a note, why not just get to him with the sword? Why are you sending a hate letter? I'll tell you why. Because that's all she could do. All the enemy can do is send dirty letters. He can't kill you. The power of life and the power of death, uh, it, it's in his hand. God, God controls when you die. Hell, all the devil can do is get in your ear and say, you're not going to make it. You're going to die. You're a failure. You're a loser. Give up. Stop. No, hey, if... If I got a witness, anybody that the devil's ever said, you're not going to make it, give up. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you, the devil said. Hey, if the devil was going to kill you, do you think he'd have let you get here? The very fact that you're here means that it didn't work out. Means that the, if it was up to the devil, you'd have died as an infant. If it was up to hell, you wouldn't have been in church this morning. But the mere fact you're sitting on a pew means you can give God praise because it means the devil is alive. You're not dead. You're not dead. I wish I had somebody could just give him praise because you're not dead. Just give him praise because you're alive. You're in the house. You're in the place the enemy said you would never be. Woo! All he can do is make you afraid. And, and let me tell you, his timing is strategic. He didn't, she, sends, she sends the note. When did she send the note? After fire fell. After prophets of Baal been killed. After rain's coming. After supernatural works are taking place. They are on the precipice of the greatest revival. They're in the middle of an amazing opportunity here. And the God is moving. And the enemy knows if I don't get this stop quick, then I, I'm going to lose bad. What would have happened if Elijah would have not got afraid? What if he would have tuned into God's voice at that moment instead of letting fear make him to... We don't know. We don't know what happens when the enemy gets us so afraid, we run from what God has called us to do. But one thing we can do now is say it will never happen again. When we bump up against the door of fear, when the enemy tells us we cannot, you got to determine right now when I'm afraid, I will not turn around. I will not listen to the voice of the adversary. I will heed the voice of God. Satan, you're a liar. Satan, you're a liar. So he gets this little post-it note from old Jezebel. Hey, you're going to die, and I'm going to kill you. And this is the dude that's called down fire. Been provided for from ravens and uh, had a lady cook him uh, meals all through a, a drought. This is the guy that's been drinking from a brook. I mean, the guy, he's been in it. He's seen the miraculous. But this one little note throws his whole world off. Fear can throw your whole world off. Okay, so what does he do? He starts running. He starts running for his life. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant. When he saw it, when he saw, he didn't hear it. When he saw, you better watch what you're looking at. Mm. Isn't it amazing that what he saw affected his faith? It was, oh yeah it was what you put before you come on we don't walk by sight but we, we walk by faith but you got be, better be guaranteed the Bible says don't put anything wicked in front of your face don't put any gossip in front of your face don't put any lust and anger in front of your face watch what you got in front of your eyes oh I don't think all that really matters about all that stuff hey look at Lot Bible says he looked at Sodom and Gomorrah. Where did he end up? Look at the ten spies that went to spy out Canaan land. They looked and they saw and beheld giants and they died in the wilderness and never got to have promise because they were looking at giants. Come on, go ahead. Look, look at Peter. There he is walking on the water looking at Jesus. But then the Bible says he looked at the waves and where he looked caused him to die. 
Wherever you look is where you go. What your attention's focused in on is the direction you're going. Tell, show me the eyes of a man, and I'll tell you what he'll be in 10 years. Show me what he's invested in. That's where you're going. And yet, and yet there was a man by the name of Moses who witnessed the supernatural and he, he realized he had him about a million slaves. He had him some slaves. Come on, slave. And about a billion slaves. And, and they don't, have, they don't, hey, you, do you have any bazookas? No. No, no, no. Pharaoh's got all the bazookas, doesn't he? Hey, do, do we have any chariots? No, man, he's got all the chariots. Do we have any, do we have any, like, airplanes we can get at? No, we, he's got all the airplanes. But the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27 that, that Moses, by faith, Hebrews eleven twenty seven 27, by faith he forsook Egypt. That means by faith he walked out on the guy that had all the power. By faith he looked at the same king with all the might and all the money. And, and not, he was not afraid. Why was he not afraid? Because he was able to see the things that were invisible. Let me tell you what you look at does affect your faith. I wish I had somebody that could close your eyes and see for the oh, faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things unseen you ought to close your eyes and see your body healed you ought to close your eyes and see your family together you ought to close your eyes and see your finances you ought to see it you got to start seeing it What is it you need? I want you for 10 seconds, close your eyes, and I want you to see it by faith. I want you to see the door opening. I want you to see it happening in the name of Jesus and begin to give God praise. You need to see pearly gates. You need to see walls of jasper. You need to see gates of pearl. You need to see it. Oh, Oh, the church, people are leaving the church. Oh, people are talking bad about the church. Oh, negative things are happening about the church. Baby, we're not looking at the same thing. Your fears got you looking at people leaving. My faith has got me planning on a bigger building. My faith sees the greatest days ahead of me. My, I can run my own house. It's all right. Woo, but I'll go ahead because I see. Ah, why is he running? He can see something you can't see. I can see something. Faith, evidence not seen. When he saw it, he arose and went for his life. His, his, whose life? His life. He started focusing on his life. And that's why he got afraid. Because he started focusing on him. He got focused on his abilities. Fear puts the focus on your abilities, not God's. That's why David's got a slingshot going against the giant saying, I got the Lord a host. You come at me in the sword, spear, and shield. I come at you in the name of the Lord. He didn't say I come at you with a slingshot. He didn't say I come at you with my skills and arts and all my abilities. No. He said, my faith is focused on God. And every time, that's why we're here. We're realigning the priorities of our faith this morning. And we're saying, it's God first. My eyes are focused on the kingdom. My eyes are focused on Jesus. And when I get my eyes on Jesus, see, that's why, let me, let me tell you something. The devil lets you have a little success. Some of you are like, well, I don't pray all the time. I don't really, I'm not that faithful in my ties. I just go to church kind of when I feel like it. I don't, I'm not involved in any ministry. I don't really help out around the church. And you know what? I'm super blessed, dude. Yo, I got it going on. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the enemy. He'll let you have some success. So you can start feeling like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm doing it. I'm getting along. Just kind of, you know, going to church, soothe my conscience because it's a good thing to do. And my, everything's rocking, man. I mean, I'm going good. Yeah. But just wait. Something will come. And it will come. And you 
won't be able to do anything about it. And you know what it's going to do to you? Freak you out. Because you have lived your whole life saying, I'm pretty good. I can do it. I can do this. I can do that. I do all this. I got this there. I got that there. But then you let cancer hit your body that's incurable. Then what you going to do, Mr. Do-It-All Joe Cool? You just go ahead and let your wife come home and say, well, I'm done. What you going to do then? I thought you could do everything. See, the devil let you do that so you could get your pride up high enough. But there's an attack coming that's going to undermine that. And you're going to fall down. And it's going to be to your destruction. For pride brings destruction. That's why this morning this pastor has come to tell you. Your pastor loves you enough to tell you. Get your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the master. Keep your eyes on the king. You can't afford to get your eyes on yourself. Get your eyes off your own abilities. Let no man go glory in his own self but I got a glory I said I got a glory in God so I'll run the aisles while my body's healthy cause I'm gonna have to run them when my body's sick I'll give him praise when the bank account's full cause I'm gonna have to give him praise when I'm broke as a joke I'll dance with my wife in hand cause cause when my marriage is going through it I'm going to need to dance with yours in my hand. I figured out how to live. And I live by faith. And faith lets me see things that are invisible. I'm afraid. Let's go, servant. Let's get out of here. We got to go. Let's get out of here. I'm going in. The Bible says he went to Beersheba, which is in Judah. And when he got to Judah, he said, all right, servant, you just stay here. And I'm going to leave you here. And he kept running. Fear will get you by yourself. And take you to a wilderness. I don't need anybody. No, no, no. I, I, just, I just need some time away from the church. I just want to, I just got to be, I lock my, you lock yourself in your room. Come on, somebody. Let me talk to you. I'm talking about fear this morning. I'm talking about the just kill me now prayer. That's where it's going to end. That's where he's about to go. Fear has gripped his heart. He's focused on himself. He's been able to do it all. He's been Mr. Awesome. And now all of a sudden, he hasn't been able to convert Jezebel. He can kill prophets. He can call down fire. He can, but he can't convert. He was expecting this lady to convert. He's expecting to go in the king's house, lay his hands on her. She'd get the Holy Ghost, get baptized and become a Pentecostal. But now she's hating on him and, and it's all changed because that's not how he had imagined it in his world. So now he says, I'm leaving everybody I love. I don't need anybody to help me. I, that's the spirit of fear, not God. I don't need no one. That is hell, not heaven. God says, where two or three are gathered together in my name. He said, there is a, a body and we are one body. We're jointly put together. Right. Hey, friend, you ought to grab your neighbor by the hand and just say, neighbor, I need you. I might be afraid, but I'm not going into my wilderness without somebody. I need accountability. I need an accountability partner. I need somebody that will call me out and say, Pray, I, hey, Elijah, this ain't the way it's supposed to be. And then, and then he goes into the wilderness without any accountability. It's when you mess up. Nobody's with him. All by himself. Afraid. And he came down and sat under the juniper tree. And requested that he might die. It's crazy because why on earth was he running in the first place? For his life. Now he's saying, I'm going to die. This is the roller coaster of fear. One day you're euphoric, the next day, come on somebody. It's the roller coaster that kills you. It's fear. Now the euphoric high, I'm going to run and I'm going to save myself. I've done everything else. Then you realize, oh my God, I'm in the desert. Kill me. Just, 
It is enough now, Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. I am no better than fear, fear, unstable. You know, this prayer of, of fear, this prayer of just... Just kill me now, God. I know nobody, I know everybody in here is so spiritual and holy. Y'all can't admit it, but I'll admit it. There's been times in life that I've sat down and thought, you know what, God? Let's just finish it. Take me on to heaven. I'm ready to go. Anybody be odd enough, honest enough, at least just to bob your head and say, I've said that. Well, look, here's Moses. I, I know some of y'all didn't, but look what Moses. Here he is, Numbers eleven fourteen. And I am not able to bear all these people alone because it's too heavy for me. If thou dealt thus with me, he says, kill me. Moses said, I, kill me then, I pray. Kill me. Eleven fifteen. Yeah. Favor in thy sight. Yeah. Well, yes, kill me, I pray. Moses prays it. Elijah prays it. Look at Jonah. Here's Jonah in chapter 4, verse 3. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me. Moses prayed it. Elijah prayed it. Job, why died I not from the womb? Why did I not just give up the ghost when I came out of the... I should have... God Almighty, why on earth did you ever let me be born? Come on, somebody. If Moses prayed it, Jonah prayed it, Elijah prayed it, Job prayed it, you've prayed it. And if you haven't prayed it, you've thought it. I'm done. Take it. Just, God, you know what? Just take me. I'm ready. It's, I'm, I'm so done. I'm done with this. Or maybe you prayed it over your marriage. You know what? Just kill it, God. Come on, somebody. You know what God did? He didn't kill him. Aren't you glad? God doesn't answer all your prayers. I know you got upset about the prayer that he didn't answer about your miracle. But thank God he didn't answer the prayer when you were down. He knows the prayer to answer. And if he'd answered all my prayers, I wouldn't be here right now. Because I prayed under a juniper tree and said, God, kill me. But God didn't kill me. And God didn't kill Elijah. As a matter of fact... God never killed Elijah. <laughs> he said, no, dude, I'm not going to kill you. Matter of fact, I'm never going to let you die. I'm going to be, he's one of only two that got to be raptured up off this, off this earth. You're not going to die. You're going to be raptured into a new dimension. You're I've come to preach against the spirit of death and those people in this house that have come to the end of your road and said it's over, take it, finished. God's not going to end it that way. He's going to end it in a cloud of glory. No, God, God didn't kill him. Look at your neighbor and say, God didn't kill him. Look at your neighbor and say, I... I I'm thankful he has not answered all my prayers. Amen. It's on the way to church this morning. You prayed. God strike that person in front of me dead, dead, driving too slow. Got to church, realized it was your wife. You're like, oh, thank God he didn't answer that one. Thank God he didn't answer that one. You know what he did? 1 Kings 19 and 5. He lay down and slept under a juniper tree. And behold, well, guess what happened? The Bible, you, know what, you, know what, you know what his solution was to fear? You know what got him through here? First thing he did is take a nap. Sometimes you just need to take some rest and rest. He gives his beloved sleep. Don't make a, a life decision when you're tired. Come on, somebody. Here's the deal. That's the bottom line. Elijah's exhausted. He just, look at, look at chapter 18. Tell me you wouldn't be dead tired. You done called down fire. Killed 450 by yourself. Preachers. Ran, outran a chariot. Prayed, prayed, prayed until the rain came down. His body was exhausted. God didn't come down and beat him up. You stupid idiot, you moron. What on earth are you doing, you lazy? No. He just came down. The Bible said, behold, the what? 
He's full of fear, running in the wrong direction, not really calling out fire, doing anything real special. But the angel of the Lord came down. Surely, the, we used to sing about angels. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Come on, somebody. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory. The angel of God didn't touch him when he was calling down fire. The angel of God touched him when he was full of fear. The angel of God came and ministered to him. When he, Let me tell you what. When you're low and you're afraid. I know the devil's tried to tell you you're going to die. You're not going to make it. God's forsaken. You failed God. You've not accomplished his plan. But let me tell you. There was an angel that was sent down to Lot. Even though he went to Sodom. The angel still came to Lot. And there's an angel in this house. The angel minister. I believe in ministering angels. And I believe they walk amongst the people of God. When Daniel was in a lion's den. You know what God did? God sent angels into the lion's den. Uh, when Peter was locked up in a prison cell, an angel came to him in a prison cell. Uh, oh, there was an angel that visited uh, the barren womb of Sarah. Come on, somebody. He was in a wilderness. Uh, there's angels have showed up in Sodom. Uh, angels have showed up in lion's dens. Uh, angels have showed up in prison cells. Uh, they've showed up when Paul was on a stormy ship and the ship was going to sink. Uh, he said an angel came uh, and let me know it's going to be on all right, I've come to preach to somebody. You know what an angel is? An angel is a messenger. There's a message right now for you that God is bringing. If you would let the angel touch you, there's a way out. You're going to be okay. Arise and eat the word of God. You can live again. I'm almost done. I said there's angelic presence. Woo! God didn't, God didn't kill him because he overdid it. God got sent an angel and some food. He said in verse 6, and looked again, and beheld, there was a, behold, there was a cake, bacon baked on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and went back to sleep. Dude was tired. Verse 7. And an angel of the Lord came again. He sent him again. And second time touched him and said, Arise and eat. Because the journey is too great for thee. Here he is. He's witnessed fire. Stevie. Rain. He's outran a chariot. He's been fed by ravens. He's been fed by a widow. But at his lowest point. He was awakened, not at his highest. When he was hurting is when the angel came. When he was down, gets over, I'm done. It wasn't a widow that cooked him a cake. It was an angel. Can you, can you imagine what that cake must have tasted like? What the water must have tasted like that had been drawn by celestial hands? He put that to his lips and he tasted God and the things of heaven more so under the juniper tree than he did on the Mount Carmel. It was in his pain, Jacob, when he was low, when he had actually kind of failed God, that God didn't come. This is the nature of the God we serve. God didn't come beat him over the head. Let me tell you something. I've come to preach to somebody that's low. Somebody knows what it's like to sit under a juniper tree. You've prayed the just kill me now prayer. God's not going to kill you. Today he sent an angel with bread and with water. The bread is the word of the Lord. And the water is the Holy Ghost. And what you need to do is taste the celestial water. What you need to do is let that water begin to fill your mouth again and begin to speak with other tongues. What you need to do is open up that word and hear from the word of God that's coming to your spirit this morning that says you will live and not die. That I'm not going to kill you. I know what you did. I know that you failed me. I know you're depressed and you're battling anxiety. I know you're battle bottled up with all kinds of junk. I'm not going to beat you down because you're not where you should be. But here, there's a fresh infilling of the 
Holy Ghost for you. There's a fresh word for you today. And I'm going to restore you. I'm going to strengthen you. You ought to stand to your feet right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I know how it is to sit under a tree and say, I, I'm, I'm done, just kill me now, God. We all do. We've all been there and somebody's there today. And yet there's a supernatural power that's in this building right now. Come on, some of you have said, you know what? I'm sick, but I'm just done believing that God's going to heal me. God, just kill me. Hey, friend, I've come with the word from you. I want you to get your eyes on the things that you are unable to see in the natural. I want you to believe it by faith that God can, God can, and he will. If you would today, take the hand of somebody near you. We're not going to be like Elijah and do an altar call by ourselves today. But I want you to take the hand of just somebody next to you. Right now, all across this building, hand in hand. And I want you to begin to pray. If you feel to come to the front, you can. But you don't have to. You can stand right there today. I just feel like all across this building that there are angels that have been ministering and walking up and down the aisles of this church. There's angels that have been walking up and down. The angelic presence of heaven is in this building. Come on, Moses. You know what it is to see the invisible by faith. But you also so know what it is to say God the, the people are overwhelming me I can't take it anymore kill me oh Jonah you preached a great revival there in Nineveh and you wrote a book in the Bible but remember the day you said God I'm done just, just end it all oh Job you ended up with twice of what you had and it was good but remember when you prayed just end it all God but thank God thank you Jesus thank you Lord that you didn't answer the prayer thank you that you sent ministering angels here's what I want you to do at the end of your road I want you just to begin to speak with other tongues let God begin to fill you let the Holy Ghost infiltrate your spirit that's it that's it visitor friend you say I don't know what it all it's all about hey why don't you just try closing your eyes try talking to him just give him your heart Lord I love you and I'm giving you to all of me God fill me with your spirit fill me with your power fill me with your love anoint me dear God Come on, in this house, God has been preaching. God has been speaking. Maybe you need to get you off the, off the pinnacle of your story and put Jesus at the top of it. Come on, maybe your, your success is great, but you're glorying in what you've done. Hey, friend, that no flesh can glory. you got to get yourself in the altar. Get yourself to a place of prayer. If you don't have a relationship with God, when it all crumbles... I said when it all crumbles, you'll be filled with fear, suicidal thoughts going through your mind. But get your mind right right now. Oh, come on. I wonder if you could begin to pray with that person with a voice, uh, a loud voice. Uh, is there is, uh, somebody that you could just find? Pray with them. Uh, let them hear you praying for them. Come on, let them hear you love on them a little bit. Come on, let him have a kaya, let him have a siya, tie.